Okay, let's take a look at a uh, pitch combination. This is C.J. Wilson, I think 2012. This is a fastball middle in. Real speed 92, EV is about 95 on that. This is a fastball that sinks and it's at 91 real speed and somewhere between 86 and 88 from an effective speed depending on where you locate that. It's kind of middle away to down and away. And then a cutter at 90. So we've got 90, 91, 92. But the cutter is in the pressure zone inside and ends up blowing them up. So the first question is why would he swing at that? And the answer is the deception was brilliant. If you take a look at the clock in the upper right hand corner, when we get to point one three three, that's a third of the way. And those pitches are exactly on top of each other. So this hitter has there's no chance that he's seen any difference between those two pitches yet. Here we're at, at point two oh seconds. We're at, at the halfway point. They're still overlapping each other, just starting to split apart. And now this cutter gets all the way to the inside part of the plate and off the plate in that pressure zone, which is that six inch area all the way around the strike zone. And we know that when that happens, the production goes down dramatically. Somewhere between 50 and 80% reduction when you can get hitters to swing at that. And the reason they swing at it is because all the way to the plate, that looks like a strike. And then it's just gone. So his pitch combination of 92 in, 90 in off the plate, and 91 middle away, when they're located perfectly, they work extremely well together. Where the problem comes in is when any one of these is a mistake. So if this cutter stays out over the plate, obviously, it's going to be it's going to have a different effect and the different effect is because it's going to have less speed number 1 and less deception because to get there it's got to go there from a different route. It's not going to look the same as that other fastball. But the real the real issue happens when 92, supposed to be here, slides down to that area where it's close to the diagonal. The diagonal is going to be whatever the radar gun says it is. So when the 89 cutter stays down and in or middle in or middle middle, it's going to end up at 89.90. The 92, when it slides down a little bit, is going to end up 89.90. The 91, when it gets a little too close to that, ends up 89.90. So there's crossovers that are waiting to happen as soon as any one of these movements doesn't do what it's supposed to do. So the question is, is, is that a good design? 92, 91, and 90. And the answer is yes if it's located perfectly and you, and you use it very well together. But as soon as something like this starts to happen where you're at 92 but now it goes to an area where it's no longer gaining speed on this side of the diagonal now we're starting to get into that speed range where the hitter is tuned into all the time so that's when a pitcher like CJ who has incredible stuff starts to get into trouble because he's starting to create crossovers so hitters are going to live in this speed range and all of those pitches, when slightly mislocated, live in that speed range as well.